other day, I woke up and opened Twitter like I always do and saw that tons of people were posting bad tier lists of all the mainline Pokemon games. So I said, you know what? I'm here to set the record straight, but I won't just be ranking the main series games. No, 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 no. I'm going to be ranking every Pokemon game ever. That's right. We're going through every single game that has ever been released with these little guys in them. So get those angry comments ready because things are about to get spicy. And let's just rip this band-aid right off and dig my teeth into a game that was really well received by Pokemon fans on launch. This game was a fresh take on the tried and true main series game formula, but that doesn't mean that it was a good thing. Don't get me wrong, exploring an ancient Sinnoh region, wandering around catching Pokemon, and slaying Dark Soul bosses were all incredibly fun tasks in January of 2022, but booting this game up a year later after the release of Scarlet and Violet really shows its lack of replayability. And don't even get me started on the battle system. There aren't many fights in this game, which is a positive because the less time I have to spend watching a cutscene of an enemy Pokemon wail on me for five turns straight, the better. So this one goes into the fun until it isn't tier. And it's not on this tier list for some reason, so we're just gonna edit it in now and just pretend that it's there later. Just like Legends Arceus, we're going to take a blast to the past to where it all started with Pokemon Red and Blue. Or Red and Green if you live in Japan. As much as I wanna give these games credit for being the genesis of my favorite gaming franchise of all time, I really can't look past the glaring issues and lack of features that these games have when compared to newer generations of Pokemon. So I have come up with the perfect tier to place these in. If you really want to revisit visit Kanto, do it in literally any other game than this. But before we get into ranking those games, let me just throw every spinoff game that I've never played here, and I have now upset all 10 Pokemon Puzzle League fans. Man, sharing my opinion online is really making me hungry. Good thing we have a sponsor for today's video that can help with just that. Are you ever too tired or busy to go through the hassle of cooking a full, healthy meal for yourself, but at the same time, you don't want to settle for something quick and easy like fast food? Well, boy, do I have the solution for you. By signing up for today's sponsor, Factor, you can get fresh, ready-made meals delivered straight to your doorstep. Factor's chef-created meals are created by dietitians to ensure every meal is packed with premium, science-backed nutritional quality. These meals come together in minutes and take out the guesswork of what to make for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. There is absolutely no prep and no mess. How else did you think I would ever finish all these games for this tier list? Not to mention, Factor has something for everyone's dietary needs, offering keto, low calories, vegan, and vegetarian options. And as someone who cares about their health and fitness, I can assure you that Factor is the perfect option for helping you find a meal plan that will help you reach your wellness goals. Plus, with Factor, you can finally uninstall those fast food ordering apps. No longer will you have to rely on takeout that's no good for you, as Factor delivers no nonsense delicious and nutritious food that's ready quickly. If you're looking to start your fitness journey by eating right, Factor is the perfect place to start. Use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGKIDFEB50 for 50% off your first box. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Hey, that's pretty cool. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this video. What's a Pokemon game that you can eat in? Pokemon Cafe Mix. Just kidding, I haven't played that one either, so it also goes here. One that I have played, however, is Pokemon Sword and Shield, where you can eat curry for some reason? Anyways, that's enough talk about food. I think these games get an unfair rap because of a certain image of a certain tree, but overall, I think that these games are an above average Pokemon experience. I don't think that they are amazing or anything, but coming off of the dud that was Gen 7, I really appreciated that these games didn't do too much in the way of story and just has you running through gym after gym trying to become the best. It felt like Pokemon returning to its roots. Sure, the actual gym puzzles themselves led something to be desired, but I think at this point I'd rather just fight a few battles back to back in an empty room instead of whatever this is supposed to be. But at the end of the day, that's not any reason to justify putting this game anywhere above average, so we'll highlight where it really shines, and that is thanks to the DLC. Instead of getting a definitive version and having to play through the entire region again, we just got to experience new stories and a lot of great new features through the Sword and Shield DLC that really carries this game's ranking. So congratulations, you earned yourself a tier of your own. 
speaking of definitive versions, we're making a tier to rank all of them. If you want to experience the best that these regions have to offer, these are the games you need to play to do so. Sure, I could have made this tier list with your typical S, A, B, C ranking system, but the reason that I like so many tiers is because it lets me get way more specific and explains my reasoning at a glance. Because I definitely prefer some of the games in this tier to others, but at the end of the day, if you want the definitive Pokemon experience in any of these regions, then these are the games you should be playing. I'll go ahead and order them in this tier in a way to where you can probably guess my age. Which leads us to this tier. It's always hard to rank these games in a standard tier list because there really is very little reason to play them after the definitive versions are made, so they aren't bad games, but they just get outclassed by the far superior version. And then you have Johto. Hey, remember when I said that Gen 7 was a dud like a minute back in the video? Coming off of the dud that was Gen 7, yeah, let's talk about that. These games suck and they're going into the same tier with these because I know my audience is full of a bunch of people who played these when they were young and are still being blinded by nostalgia. Why am I rambling before getting into my criticisms for these games? Maybe I'm just trying to emulate the painstaking early game of the Alolan region that has you mashing through dialogue and watching cutscenes for the first two hours before you get to do any real fights. Getting into the meat of these games could not take any longer. I don't know how anyone has the willpower to be able to speedrun a game like this. All right, all right, I've made you suffer long enough. I'll get into why I actually dislike these games now. Uh, or maybe I won't. These games are really bad, and I actually think it's funnier the harder you try to defend them, so I'm not gonna say anything else. And you know what else came out the same year as Pokemon Sun and Moon? Pokin Tournament, woo! Yeah, that's a game I played for one day and never touched again. So yeah, there's probably only like one person who will actually care when I create a unique tier for this one. Next up, we've got Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. And I think I have the perfect tier for these two games. And then we'll put Pokemon Go here. And you know, while we're at it, I'm just gonna put every other game that you can play on your iPhone into this tier. So in goes this game I've never heard of, Pokemon Home, Pokemon Master Sex, a game where you can see how high a Magikarp can jump. Yes, I am being serious and I have put time into this. These all go into the mobile game tier. And lastly, Pokemon Unite, which unironically might be my most played game on this list. Poke Park Wii? I think this deserves its own tier. This game had no reason to be fun, but it's a surprisingly good game with a lot of fun mini games baked inside of it. I've also got to throw Pokemon Conquest in here as this is easily my second favorite Pokemon spinoff title. Which which is weird because I'm not even that big of a Fire Emblem person and this is basically just Pokemon Fire Emblem. If anything, this tier list is just showing me that if you slap a Pikachu into any gaming genre, I am 1000% more likely to play it. Uh, and then I'll round out this tier with my Pokemon Ranch for no other reason than I have actual memories of playing this game, which is more than I would expect, so for that, it deserves a spot. So what is my favorite Pokemon spinoff game? Well, it's time that we make our top tier. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky is easily the best spin-off game I've ever played. I actually didn't know until fairly recently that Mystery Dungeon is its own series of games and that Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is just, well, Mystery Dungeon with Pokemon. These games have the best gameplay of any spin-off on top of having the best storyline of any Pokemon game in the entire franchise. You can always identify Mystery Dungeon fans based on who their favorite Pokemon is. If they say it's Grovile, there's a reason and why. And that is why this is peak Pokemon. Joining Explorers of Sky in the peak tier has to be the best Pokemon generation of all time, Generation 5. This is where the main series of Pokemon games reached its climax and it's been downhill ever since. The monster designs, the sprite work, the story, for what it's worth, Everything came together in these games to give us the best Pokemon experience that you could possibly have. With the release of every new Pokemon game, I continue to chase that high that was my first time playing through Unova. But none of the games that follow it can ever come close. Game Freak had hit its stride when it came to sprite work, and these will always be the best looking Pokemon games. Because, unfortunately, we'll never return from the 3D hellscape that took over after these beautiful games were finished. We went from having so much character character and personality in each individual Pokemon's sprites to 
this. It's certainly gotten better over the years as they've added more animations to each Pokemon, but man, I do wish that we could try out some Octopath Traveler art styles for future Pokemon games because if black and white ever get remade and they look like these monstrosities, yeah, you can catch me rioting in the streets. And for that, these games deserve a special place in hell. Speaking of 3D Pokemon, here is Game Freak's first attempt at it. These games are really hard to rank for me because I did enjoy them, but they just feel like pretty standard Pokemon experiences. So welcome to the Gen 6 tier. So that covers almost all of the main series games now, but we're saving this one for last to maximize watch time. Oh, and uh, be sure to subscribe if you don't completely hate me at this point. You know what I really, really enjoy about Pokemon? Pokemon double battles. Getting into VGC is really what sparked my enjoyment for Gen 6, so imagine if there were games where most of the battles were double battles. That's the treat that you're in for when you play Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. These games are phenomenal and do 3D Pokemon better than any of the mainline series games have ever been able to, which is just sad really. If I ever want to play a 3D Pokemon game, I'm probably coming back to these ones first. Other 3D games include Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, as well as Pokemon Battle Revolution. And I know there is more to do in these games than just battle with the funny little guys, but for the sake of this tier list, eh, that's all they are to me. Now we're just staring at a lot of stuff. So I think this deserves a tier that indicates, just stop, we've had enough. I'm sorry to all the Pokemon Rumble fans out there, but do you really need another game? Come on. Stop being greedy. Some of these probably don't deserve to be in the same tier with games like Pokemon Rumble U, but if the best iteration of your game has already come out, then it's probably time to hang it up. Uh, sure. These are the games that your parents buy you when they realize that trading card games can be really, really expensive. And uh, this one is just funny. Okay, now that we have come to the last few games on the list, I've really just left us with the good stuff. These are all just the top tier spinoff games in my opinion. I think Pokemon Snap is a great time and obviously I'm biased with my love for the early Mystery Dungeon games, so I will always put these ones here as I think they're the best in the series. I was probably a bit harsh on my Super Mystery Dungeon ranking, but after Gates to Infinity, my heart couldn't handle another bad Mystery Dungeon game, so I never really gave it a chance. And with that, it leaves us with just Generation 9, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I really, really wish that I could justify putting these games into the top tier because I think that they were so close to giving us a new formula that actually worked. But at the end of the day, these games just look way too bad and run way too poorly to be in the highest tier. There is just no excuse anymore for having games that look like this in the year 2023, especially when you are the highest grossing media franchise of all time. But look, I get it. The Pokemon company has Fue Coco plushes that have to get sold, so these games are coming out no matter what. I just still think it's unacceptable. Well, there's the tier list. Feel free to leave your opinions in the comments down below, and I definitely won't read them because my tier list is perfect and you can't convince me otherwise.